Hi guys! Welcome to another screencast in Method for Health Research. I am your professor, Dr. Sipache Basit, and for today's session, we will be talking about finding and critiquing evidence, the research literature review. Well, as you all know, um, in order for you to come up with a problem and in order for you to know a substantial detail about the problem that you are trying to embark into when, when it comes to your research journey, it is very important that you always, of course, um, you should have checked uh, pertinent lit literature related to the problem or to the research problem that you're trying to investigate. So that is the reason why literature review is considered to be as an essential part in your research journey. So what is a literature review? So when we say literature review, it is primarily defined as a written summary of the state of evidence on a certain research problem. So why are we doing literature review? Primarily because you want to find if there is a research gap okay, on the research topic that you are most interested in. And at the end of the day, your literature review, okay, your literature review would be your alley, especially when you defend your paper. So, in order for you um, to have a very systematic way of doing a literature review, these are some of the steps. First of all, you must be able to formulate a question or an outline. So, personally, whenever I'm doing literature review, I'm doing a topical outline. So that way, I will be able to devise a search strategy. So when you say search strategy, um, you should be able to know what are the keywords that you are going to use, what would be the, the you have, so that you know, search engine contains millions of data. So you should be able to, you know, at least filter essential uh, pertinent component of your review search uh, when it comes to year, uh, keywords, topic, etc. And then conduct a research or conducting a search. So then are the days that when you do research, uh, we are just confined to the four corners of the lab library. Um, nowadays, there are numerous databases out there in the world wide web. So that is the reason why um, you should you should be able to find a reliable um, search engine. So as we all know, Google Scholar is one of the most reliable search engines. But there are some institutions who are subscribing to to um, EBSCO, Science Direct, and other publishing house, Elsevier, and other. Um, um, publishing companies um, that may contain that may contain repository of different uh, researches all over the world. Okay, so that's the reason why after you have conducted search, then you must be able to retrieve relevant sources. So chances are when you do your uh, your your search, when you key in your uh, keyword, um, there are several sources that would appear. Okay, right in front of you so you have to be able to choose only those literature that would be relevant to your studies and then here comes now the most difficult part abstracting and encoding information so that you'll be able to prepare a written synthesis synthesis or this is actually a systematic summary of what you have actually searched on the research problem or research topic of your interest. So, research sources could be primary source if, if you are directly quoting, if you are directly quoting your source or the author. Now, there are cases that um, you, ha you have actually found uh, research article A, and research article A have been quoting several researches. So, secondary source. Um, sometimes you cannot you cannot actually find um, the second the the things that are being quoted by the research article A. So, so.
So sometimes some researcher would say as as quoted by research article A. So you know, but however, um, that is not really reliable and acceptable. So in most literature or in most journals. So that's the reason why, as much as possible, your research resources would be primary source. Now, what if research article A have been quoting, citing several researches, okay? And those several researches are also pertinent to your study. Then that's the time that we can do literature chase. So I'll explain to you what a literature chase is later on. Okay? So in in collecting references for research review, these are the possible sources. Take note that number three, newspaper and magazines uh, may not be acceptable in some journal, scholarly journal, unless the information there is very pertinent to your studies. Okay, so the most acceptable would be the updated scientific journals because references such as book uh, may also be may also be useful but you know books copyright may not be as as updated as compared to scientific journals online resources you have to be careful not all websites are credible right? let's say for example i've seen graduate students who've been citing wikipedia wow that is not really acceptable okay so you really have to be careful okay so we call them gray literature so we do not want to we do not want to quote we do not want to cite great literature in our study okay so these are some of the websites wherein we can actually use uh, searching for references references through the use of bibliographic database ebsco pubmed these are some of the most popular now this is what i'll be telling you um let's say for example um uh you can you have this research article A and then research article A has been quoting several authors okay in this study okay so you might want to look okay in those authors that research article A have been citing okay so that's so all you have to do is to check the reference section of the article so you go at the back of the article then there you have it the reference section and then you do the ancestry approach or the footnote chase so there you can see several articles but the problem is sometimes the publication date the publication date uh, may not be um, applicable to your study so you really have to choose which are the things that may still be pertinent or relevant to your research topic so that's what you call the ancestry approach or the footnote chasing and then uh, we also have the descendancy approach okay so for example in your search engine um, this particular article came up okay and then sometimes some of the search engine would even uh, say uh, this article has been cited by other particles articles not particle and these articles may also be relevant to you as well so you might as well check this out okay so this is what you call the descendancy approach the descendant okay so there this article has been cited by other particles Artic article okay and how would you make unsystematic um, bibliographic references searching for bibliographic references so these, there are several um, techniques. So personally, I'm using the subject search. However, some, in some cases, the subject search may be too broad. So you might want to use the text word. So if you do not, if you really want to be specific with the one that you're chasing or searching, you might as well um, place a um, quotation mark. So that you, uh, when you, you place quotation mark in your search engine, um, it would really um, filter out um, literature that are not within the quotation mark okay or author search so because there has been author was already established research niches on this particular topic so you might want to um, search the previous work of those particular authors 
Okay, so these are some of the key electronic databases. Although my favorite is not written here, um, that's that's um, Science Direct. Now, um, during our uh, in in our in our future face-to-face -face interaction, I can teach you how to search uh, that are actually let's say expensive or paid search engine, and then. Basta, I'll just tell it to you. I cannot really, I cannot really divulge everything here in our screencast because um, uh, I'm uploading it in YouTube, you know. So this is already public. So anyway, when we see each other in face to in face to face, um, I can actually teach you. Okay, but don't worry. Your institution is a reputable institution, and and your institution is actually subscribing to various reputable search engine. So just visit the website the library website of your institution okay so we have the pubmed database yeah these are some of the most common search engine okay so ma ma as much as possible you do not do not just download the abstract you have to download the entire article and if there is even uh an option to have it in pdf format um, it is advisable to download it also in PDF format and then rename the PDF so that when you organize them in your folder, um, you can easily uh, retrieve the article because most of the time, chances are, if you're going to save it in PDF, um, the, the file name uh, would be uh, numbers and combination of numbers and words alphanumeric. So you might find it difficult to retrieve them later on. So as soon as you download the PDF file of your research article, it is very important that you will rename it. So these are other useful databases. So Google Scholar is also my favorite search engine. However, uh, it will give you links. So some of the links that, that this Google Scholar will give you uh, may actually direct you to some of the uh, some of the databases that would require you to have okay so biomed central is free okay most of them are free and this is also one of my favorite um uh website in 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 searching for literature the doaj so it's an open access so majority of the articles here are also free okay so Medline Plus, especially for us, uh, this one is also very important. Uh, Berkeley, so this one, uh, you, uh, there are some um, some website for or some open access publication tools. So praise God for that. And then um, the National Library of Medicine of the NIH. Um, this one is also very nice, especially if you're doing um, clinical studies or clinical studies or clinical research ProQuest. Um, you need to ask the school if they are subscribing to ProQuest. Sage. Okay. So in screening and gathering references, make sure that they are readily accessible, relevant, and most importantly, quality. So how would you know the quality? If the journal is is Scopus Index, and then and if you're going to look for the journal, look for the impact factor, because the impact factor means that this particular journal has been cited by other reputable researchers. So if the impact factor is indeed very high, then that journal, that journal is of high quality. So, you know, nowadays researchers are not being measured on how many publications that you did, but on the weight of each publication by means of the impact factor. So, in screening and gathering references, first of all, you need to have a complete copy of the article. Okay? And then you can fold and sort them. If, if the complete copy is not available, try to look for the hard copy in your library. Or, this is another important technique, directly communicate with the authors through email requesting a copy. So, I'm actually advising this to my undergraduate students. I, I usually say to them, write, write the author. You have, you have to email the author. Tell them that you're from the Philippines. <laughs> and then, baka maawa sila. And then, they might give you a free copy of their article. 
So that's one of the techniques because if you're going to download most, most of the time, if it's a paid subscription, um, they will just give you an abstract. And from that abstract, you can actually find the email address of the author. So in abstracting and recording the information, you need to code the studies. So there are several ways of coding it. Depends on how you will systematically organize the pertinent research articles that you have just downloaded. And then you can code them according also to the literature review protocols or to the or literature review matrices. So, so sometimes, for example, when you code the studies, so for example, here is an example for uh, you may code for independent variables and then you have another set of folders. These are all literature that may be also useful uh, because these studies pertain also to the various de dependent variables of your studies. So that's another way of coding it. There's actually no general rule. So at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the most important thing is how will you be able to systematically synthesize the literature, no matter what your coding is. So here's Here's one way of coding it. So let's say you can actually have it printed. So for every literature that you have downloaded, so you have to write who are the authors, what's the title. So the first part here are actually pertaining to the bibliographical details, okay, or citation details. And then you can have a tick mark of what type of study, and then the location setting, and then the key concepts or variables, and then the, what, what framework or theory was actually used, the research design, and then the pertinent findings. You can actually place here the pertinent findings. So that way, you can actually just pull it and then you don't have to, you don't have to reread re -read the article because you have actually um, identified pertinent information regarding the article that you have just downloaded. So, as what I've told you, when you say literature, literature review matrices, you may organize, okay, your your findings according, uh, you may organize it according to methodologic matrix. So when you say matrix, you have a table, so you have several authors, and then this author, and then the research title, and what methods did those author actually use in their study. Or, Another possible way is that you have to arrange them again according to the table, first column, the author, then the title, and then the result of their study or the evaluation matrix. Okay, so these are some systematic way of abstracting and recording information of your literature search. And then after, for every article that you will be downloading and reading, it is very important that you critic them and evaluate the evidence. So when you say research critic, this pertains to a careful appraisal of both the strengths and weaknesses of the research study that you are actually reading. So that you'll be able to identify the areas of adequacy. And so when you are evaluating or appraising a certain research article, you are actually um, looking at its virtues as well as pay. So, because that's one way of thinking critically. So, here are some of the guide questions that will uh, guide you. Okay, guide question or that some of um, in in appraising the literature that you have just um, studied or read. So, you may want you may want to screenshot this so that when you do the journal critic later on will have the guidelines. So, in preparing literature review, first, um, you have to identify the outline. How are you going to, how are you going to um, present the literature review? So, that's why outline is very important. Personally, when I'm doing research, I'm actually doing a topical outline. Topical outline. Okay? Then, after that, you have to summarize and critically evaluate. And then, check if the objective of that particular literature review is really indeed pertinent. So, reminders, okay, this is the common mistake. 
So when you say literature review, it is not a collection of quote or abstract. Meaning, do not copy things. You have to use your own words. Most importantly, the reason why you are doing literature review is that you want to point out, identify the research gap. Why? Because once you have identified the research gap, this is where you will come in as a researcher. So that you have to know what were the previous contributions of the authors that you have searched so that on your own way, at the back of your mind when you are doing the research, you now you would know that ah, this is now my contribution in my this is my contribution in my profession. Because these authors have these research gaps, they were not able to contribute things that I will be doing in my study. So that's the ultimate purpose of the literature review. Hindi siya pahabaan, hindi siya pahapat. Okay? So it's not a collection of quotes or abstract. Most importantly, you have to identify the gaps and the contributions. Okay? So, in, in, I told you a while ago that when you do literature review, uh, literature review would be your alley when you defend your paper in the future. Because uh, I will end here in this slide because it says here, hypotheses are not proved, they are supported by research findings. But without research findings, without literature review, then how would you be able to, how would you be able to uh, test your hypothesis? And with that, uh, I'd like to, of course, end this presentation by saying, do not give up on your dreams. <laughs> Do not give up on your dreams. Um, as early as now, I want you to I want you to browse literature, okay, of the research topic of your. So this has been Dr. Sipatri Basit saying, wherever you are, stay safe, everyone, and God bless you all. Bye.